Well, I'm so glad to <clears throat> be here to talk to you tonight about folk art. Florida. We all know that Florida is a state unlike any other state. Um, Dave Barry, um, who most of you probably know as a writer, a satirist, um, says that Florida has a never-ending source of materials to write about. You can't stop. And that's the way it was when I first started uh, doing research on folk artists. I couldn't stop. Um, there were so many artists to talk about um, doing fabulous, fabulously different things. So Dave Barry says that it's a statistical fact that Florida has only 6% of the nation's population, and it's probably a lot more now since he said that, but it produces 57% of the nation's weirdness. <laughs> now, I don't mean that to disparage any of the artists that I'm going to talk to you about, but I will tell you that they create from a very different kind of um, grounding than artists from other states and also from artists that you might call fine artists. Um, they see things differently. And because Florida is a state um, that is welcoming to people for second chances, it's welcoming to people who see things differently. Um, you may see things like this uh, on the roadside, um, advertising who we are uh, and how people create. We can see that there's a lot of excess here. Um, in other words, artists often use the materials that are around them, and they oftentimes collect lots of things to help inspire them in order to create. There's always that can do, I'll make a sign, I'll set up a business, um, and many of these artists have just kind of figured out things as they go along. Uh, our signage from these handmade signs are really, really terrific, and now people are collecting them. I want to start with the first artist, as Taft Richardson. He um, has passed away a couple years ago. Uh, perhaps one of the more interesting artists I've ever met in my entire life, uh, from Tampa. And he made all of these creatures, these sculptures, out of bones. Where did he get his bones? From roadkill. Unbelievable. Seeing things that other people wouldn't see. And so people would find the roadkill, take it to his house. He would put it then in his backyard and let the birds and the bugs and the animals eat at it. And then he would take the pieces of bone and he would put it in his pocket and he would hold it in his pocket until he was told by the bones where they needed to go in a new sculpture. The whole things are made by bones. Even the glue um, on these pieces uh, is made from crushed up bones. So here's a house. Now if you look at this, real, uh, a horse, excuse me. <laughs> if you look at this really, really carefully, you could see the, the number of bones that were put into this um, this one piece is in the Manila Museum of Art. Um, and Frank Holt, who was the curator of that museum for a long time, said that if there was ever a fire at the Manila, the first thing he would do would be to take that horse out of there, save it. Now, Teth Richardson didn't like or want to sell his art. And this was a man who lived extremely simply. I mean, he could have used the money, and this work could have um, provided him with a, a decent amount of money. But he said that all his pieces needed to be kept together. The other thing that he said about his work was that it was the resurrection. So if you think about all those animals that were killed, he has taken their bones and resurrected them, recreated them, remade them into something else. And he likens this in his community to the fact that somebody could do something wrong. They could commit a crime. They could do a meanness to another person. But they could be forgiven 
their lives can be resurrected, things can change. And so he was a preacher. And that was the message that he wanted to tell everyone in his neighborhood.